Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, we're probably all hopeful that it's springtime in the month of, of true plants, the true plant month. So uh, we might share some springtime sentences that we composed. And uh, what did I say? I said, uh, I hope to put my shovel under the house. I don't want to shovel no more snow, but I don't know what's going to happen. And uh, I saw one of my relatives was working on herring eggs over in Sitka. It's always a good sign. And he's doing it for a lot of people. Uh, a while ago, my uh, through the kinship system, I call her my daughter, but she was also my teacher, and she was like my grandmother, Jessie Johnny. She used to send me uh, herring eggs, boxes, every year. And so that was wonderful, so generous and so fun uh, to work on. So I thought we'd start there and then see if anybody has any questions, other things, and then we'll learn a few more things about some of these directional terms then we'll get back into our story so that's what i thought would do for yachana uh, does anybody have any springtime sentences to share maybe we'll finally turn the course oh i was trying to another one because I wanted to correct some of my spelling and high tones but I'm just gonna put it up the way it is since we're ready here okay. all right let me get let me get the uh, thing up here uh, okay let me share screen. Okay. Oops, I think you need to, if you're going to share sound, you need to do that with it, huh? Uh, How do you do that? Share sound, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
full screen. Can you see okay on my screen? Uh, plus 18. Okay. dramatic city. I just thought the Clockwork Orange background music or you know soundtrack would have been great, so that's what I did. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I was trying to get all the spelling right and I did it and it's on my on my my Google Drive here but I didn't have enough time to transport it to my little video maker and replace the old slides I had that's all but there it is that part with the storm, though, talking about the uh, sandstorm, could it be like that, Cleok GD or GD? It would be like a sand slide, I would think, like a huge, or I guess the GD, no, the GD is like a blizzard, right? Yeah, like when the sand on the sand bars, you know, when it gets spring and it's like flying all, all over the place. Yeah, okay. I thought I thought I I couldn't remember the, what's that other one, Kadunja. I thought it was like maybe a Cleo Kadunja. Oh yeah, so like a sandstorm, basically it's blown around. Uh, yeah, because it goes all over Klakwan and the river, and you get it on y'all. <laughs> right. I'll have to see. I'll see what I can find. That's a good question. Okay. We should uh, we should all just start making movies. It'd be fun. Think it enough. Good enough cheese. Anybody else got something? I'll go ahead and share. Good cheese. I'll find mine. Okay. Talk eat 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 you kuha you hat ya 
kusua tak i ti. Tak a sao ya disi. Kwak yu hat wadusika. Okay. Oops. A a a gadik y yine um yinas disi ya kua hing kua tak i ti kut awagik awagik. That's why. Okay, cheese. Cut Ayah. Um, I, yeah. Kayani DC twenty twenty one. Cha a day ya ye Aguadan Sandy. Claire Nelly Tilly. Claire at Kashti Til. Ye Kustra Kwan Katsu. Jaju at Tsu. Kak Yak Yati. Askutu Dak Wutuwa at Um Kat Kadigwat Kaja. Claire. Yupik Kanak. Darn it! Tlake, Tlake Ka Kanak. Agana. Agana. Tlake Ka. A key. A cash. A pool. A ya. Chayak. Shakwadinuk. Yake. Neste cook wood at. Wow. I was going to say dramatics. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, a, the theater class. Joya. <laughs> Ya talk e too a snowboarder's paradise ye ye ti. Sha shakik lay trad lang kapuak e. Sha kadanoa. Ha kaish do to do to e. Late a kuk wushik eat e. A Kate Yang Ha H. Who to wear? Gonna cheese. Cheese. Hook a hack. Yak eh. We shall shaki. How's the goo? Okay, you on? Oh, okay. Oh, I forgot to unmute myself. Okay. <clears throat> um, 
So I wrote these sentences last week. So it, when it's talking about the time and like the weather, um, just think last week because <laughs> it's been a little bit different. Okay. Yatach wutsach yatach kudach katlachin. Ach tu asagu tach ete. Liat e our dog Kakuak e Tat e late dark wisitan, a seer dark wisitan Guat quashk ye utik tach yande yashinusk in Hut and a stitch. Okay. Goodness, cheese. Who can I call you, hon? Ah, talk a day in Kayis, a hit to cut you, hon. You can't. Cut go. Ah, a true no way, it's all. What could the heat in this sea? Wait, sa talk. Yeah, good, sir. What you got? Uh, like could he? I wrote about last week's weather as well. So, uh, talk it is cool it is, Sean. Talk with you, yeah. Plus, out of gone. At Audishi K. Cook a gay Gual ye a dachdagan. Goodness, cheese, whook echa, whook echa. That's a way, way at she cook. Oh, yeah, get kicha. Ah, yeah, kicha. Oh, shah. Condit to yeti. Yah, shut her woos. After was a good kashuk kusuk adi. Yah, sane, Minecraft, you do so. Shukwa kicha shah. Hatla. Yaka. A duck away on Dean with good. Get Dean away for a slack, a slack away. Good thing. Actoon scarsnick a cheese. I like the violin in the background. It's like a clinga NPR news. Yeah, you get a talk ET. And as cheese, Yakucha, ye ye tea. Kach de go will heenik a de kuchwa team. Sacked quani was a team. Sacked quani tlech kayani ute. Ach, Lu, Asta Gadli, Hwasatin. Asta Gadli, ge? Yeti. Gonna cheese. Game. Okay. He was a coo, was that do a sock waiter? Tach get in case you hit. We asked the Gatli Koa, we did cock in a bear bread you do a sock. We at your way got yachity. Do we have we pilot bread? We asked da aye. Got you do a sock. Cut up got litsu. You do a sock with cake. Shoes like a shoe, like 
siu shakats ahu, you do a sock away, the cut way, mushroom, a co a gat yachiti, a shakik, canals ak gatli, you do a sock away, as da gatli, you do a sock way, bear bread, yam, a gat yachiti, a yegu gink, take a co a yat a yach, we. Shell yak yeti ka aho a ye gay. Played cock in a ka ask to ye kaki. Chicken of the woods. Wait the koa shan gugu. You do a sock. Gook shan gugu a ya. Ye awa ya ach ach kani ye ye who owe our school and a dart way. See you shakas ahu, dakasa hak eyak e, dakasa tel ucha. Ye awa, hat ka tel kedain hosak at a way. Tel 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 ha ha. Gun cheese, wook e ha. That was awesome. I didn't know that about the bear bread. Ah. Got. They're all, it's all some kind of cracker. Yeah. Okay, Johan Kunachike. Yeah, away. Nila Toka, I was a teen. Rah to us a goo. Yaks a kayat at that. Johan so talk eaty hook books. Akeha would he in so? A clay at gay. Where Kaha gay is a teen. He's the Kahi, where Ake would he? Ya do a nasky nah yetki. As our shagook a day ya on a ski ye ya. Tell for a pusty at your way. Ya naski. You had to a son. Ye away yaksaka. Ya as I ya Kaya de Achet Hatsukaha Ak. Wait, East the Kahi Aya, Heswa to Satin, but look away her. Has the Ka has to she. Stakat ye away. A cow a quick. Wait, what? Art lane Ako Ay is a tingy week, he shah. Oh, Stakat ye to dehana. Wait, Isha, a kaye would take what? Kessy dat koa. Kess has u what eh? Ya akua we a dat ki. Quash Easter ga wu aya. We got ka has kushi. Ya has shakek koa. Kess has the twa ush go just to cut ka ji yes aya. Ya awako a kek a dat ki. Ya can nahoe shall hick a yana ye. Just the cut that dach to us a good yach with lake. Ya shall cut a tesh a yach o tea. We chaku taco. So we can ask you dek tesh a toa or school just to cut at a ya ye lake. Ye we capitalism suck a ya we ease the kahi. Got ka kushi. It's a tuck talk eaty away at that you took the tan. Ya hua yi nak yi du sa ka khu at le tu. U ha na ya a da ti khau tu sa at a khu a we at ka hi ni kash jas ka khu a da at ka kot. Ka khu wut da kut da we di ki an ka wu ya di. Du yi ta ya a cha we has du to a sa ku has au sa ku. A khu a cha ku di di a ya a da ti has tu sa at a wa. Ya ha kusi, hech wa sa uti, hech jas cha kheikhi ya khawi, cha da sa a a ti na khaya ti, ka ku kwa ti. Uhoan kwa ha tu wu yik e, gaan ku tu wa a di. Wu tu sa tiin su cha gu ta wu di yi, shkash ni ka kakha ya ye has, wa sa, ka wak shi yik e has au sa ne. Ya, CBJ ka C Alaska Heritage Institute. Wish kashnik aya. 
we lean aya ye scow aya with tits a teen ye shouts a teen to cut ye aya knees shall ya shall say it guard ye just cut at we ik cut at the aya to cry was under to walk a canashki take card it was a go has a high just to cut at Ya sing get it high, Haji, who are clean out at your way, ye say our clock, Haji is. Ye away, where keys shake out the new goose and knock. You do a sock away, who? Yes, ka sneak, gee, star, who goody. A joy, a who are we tucked in town, we could as a cahaya has a kosher hit. Has a daughter, you has a wish at kin, dark. Ya ye dat so has our shagu quish gashnik. Sha dog. Um. Sakae ka. Ah, a do satsu. Ah, do sai hosset. Kaski ye owe. Has to redach aya hosaku. Jay go gang quish gashnik. Nchi sha redi sa a hegwashi to wasaku. Kadain kausha hit aya. Um, Michaela, go do do a song. Oh, I could not have a a day at your high couch. She hit the how is the sneak has out a year. Do he dach a casque chicken shah away her? Yeah, oh, who not could not have a has out a good quick sneak. Wait at so I clean a year sneak. I could not who you do a song. I go say a wood. Ye awaken cheese. Gunner cheese, ya, ya, ye scarcely cut in kindly gill on a conahook a kinky is kadach kiss at ten woods in Santikihini. The car would to a cook, do ya, ye niece Okay. Okay. Yeah, just wait. Okay. A new Okay. What's that do with sock? The key on Kabu Yedi, Glaka Hainach. Ah, Jesus. That's Jesus, huh? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. I just wasn't too sure. Hawaii, you katangi, Yesu, you has so I saw. Ah. Yeah, what has to be? And I have a good Yesu. You that again? Yeah, what are you? Yes. Connachoi was a good. Kay has our she at Kahini at she. Ah, who are we, Jago Kark Utsu? Gosh, how you get tongue in that yajit to Nayan. Shoo, who are ya, gosh? We at Kahini, she, he, aya, who to a she. A it a thing get she. Okay, okay. Goodsy, good cheese. So maybe we'll do a little walkthrough of uh, some of those things. So I thought I'd share some things. So my my kids like to ski as well. So we had a lot of fun up on the mountain uh, chasing the Easter bunny. They had someone dressed up like an Easter bunny and they'd hop, make the kids hop. You, you can always tell, you just see this huge pile of kids following them around. But they would uh, throw eggs and the kids would go get the eggs. We were getting frustrated because we'd see them go by and we'd go, and all the eggs are gone. And these, we hear some of these older kids, you know, and who knows what these kids are going through. Maybe it makes them feel good, but we'd overhear some of them saying, like, I think I got them all. I, I filled up my whole backpack. And like so, some of the kids don't have anything. And so it, that's calling them shikayq, which isn't nice. It means greedy. Um, but kesh ushikayq means generous. So, you know, it was interesting when Nora taught me that one because like, not stingy that's how you say generous which means i think you're just supposed to be generous right uh and so 
we were kind of chewing out some of the kids like hey why don't you share maybe you should share and um and so i was saying it's like uh it's the seeds of capitalism these little easter hunting games you know because every we take our kids to these things and our kids are just real I don't know if they're bashful or what, but they just watch all these other kids just gobble up everything. You know, it's like uh, that Hungry Hippos game. It's like, Rah! and so, um, but we still had fun. And they got a lot, they got a few things. And we chased down Easter Bunny, said hi. And we had lots of fun. And then um, the day before that, we had gone on this trail, Rainforest Trail, up in North Douglas, up by Day, what's that place called? Day Key Moon? No, that's a different one. Something new, I forget, I'll look it up. But, uh. Chicago <laughs> New? Oh, it's caught. What is it? Chicago New? Chicago. Yeah. Way up on North Douglas. They should. Uh. Go by False Outer Point, I think they caught. It. it was Kosh. Kosh was the one stealing all the eggs from the kids. I brought my own Easter Bunny outfit, <laughs> robbed the other one, sold them in the parking lot, <laughs> and the eggs were empty. <laughs> um, more seriously, yes, there's this culture clash. I was so surprised when um, I was out in Western Alaska and the children, one of the worst things they could say to each other is, you're being stingy. You're just money hungry, mm. just like a direct translation from the Yupik in which they were disciplined. Uh, and, and it was so different than candy sales and Easter egg hunts and monopoly games. <laughs> so. well, we used to come up with phrases when I was just working with Richard Downhauer and would say, what out to quit that rabbit laid an egg and we just have fun with stuff like that. But then we started talking about, you know, so we were trying to think of like also for the, you know, those who are believers, as we'd say in Shinget at Kahini. And I was saying, there's not just one way to think, there's lots of ways to think. And so it's good to come up with phrases and things that accommodate uh, a lot of different folks and what they believe. We have a lot of fun going outside uh, and so we did that story trail up on um, uh, that false outer point area. Shikakinu, okay. And um, and it was great. And so they, they take, they laminate the, and blow up some of the pages. And I was reading that story. And so I told the story to my kids and sing it. So I told you folks. And uh, here's the here's the translation um well i guess where did it start how did i start it i forget now you guys could tell me didn't you go from talking about the easter bunny to the you're saying it's not our way to be greedy and then i feel like you started talking about yeesh yeah yeah so then uh I, I was thinking about this so i this is the story that's on that walk and so i told i said i'll tell you guys the story how i know it um so the tide never never went anywhere or you could say the tide just was always still always used to be still and it didn't go out uh and it didn't it didn't come up and uh raven he saw down in the water these sea urchins and so uh, and then there's a phrase that's pretty important to the story. It should be the title of the story i think which is so that's why raven went down um the bull kelp so is the name of a shirt that belongs to the Tukdain Tan. And uh, he, he went down, he tried walking down the kelp and getting the sea urchins, but he would just, he kept bobbing back to the surface. I guess he was full of air, I don't know. But um, he would just bounce up 
and then he would just drift around so he came back to the shore and he saw this mink and he said hey do you swim to the bottom of the water and the mink says yeah it's not that hard it's not hard for me and he says well can you go get some of those sea urchins for me and so he went and got him some sea urchins and raven just ate them right up when he ate them from the shell it's called audinis um, eating sea urchins raw and then he uh he had knew that there was this person called the little old person that sits on the tide. So is the tide, just like yukiskukek. And then shigyaudzanugu is like uh, sitting on the head of it. And then shanak is an old person, little old person. And so he, uh, that old person was sleeping around a fire and had a board that they just kept on their back. And I guess that kept the heat right to them. They always like to sleep by that heat. So Raven said, uh, it's okay if I sit by this fire, eating those sea urchins just really chilled me. And that little elder says, no, go away. So he sat down right between that little elder and the fire, warmed him. Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. And, uh, was warming himself up and then that little elder got mad and uh, called him a pretty bad name. So there, there's some different versions. The oldest version I've heard of this story, they'd say, uh, when he was born, his mother never gave him a name. And it was that little elder who named him. It's sensitive stuff because you're not supposed to say bad things about Raven. But she called him Kate which means, uh, we'll just say doo doo butt Raven. And so that's what she called him. And, uh, and so that was that's where the, his name comes from. That's, and they was really laughing when he was telling this. I think this was Kuchain, Frank Italio. And uh, we have a Kuchain in here. I'm not blaming you. So I heard from the old Kuchain. And uh, anyways, so then uh, Raven makes his move. So he he attacks this little elder, picks him up, and holds him upside down. And he had kept that sea urchin shell, and he starts hitting them all over their butt with that sea with that um, sea urchin shell. And he's saying, "Let go, let go of that tide, let go." And um, and so that they start saying, stop it, Raven, stop it. I'll let go, I'll let go of the tide. And so he sends his partner down there, Gidzanuk, Gidzanuk, to go. He says, go look at the tide, what's it like? And he goes down, he's like, it's down to about half a man. It's down about half the size of a person. So he says, let it go, let it all go. It keeps hitting them on the butt with those with that empty shell so uh that little elder totally just lets go of the tide and then it all goes out and then everybody can see all this food all these different things and then um because he did that people had access then to sea urchin and to clams and cockles and gumboots and all these different things that are food from the beach and now there's twice a day that the tide will come in and out you know and people can they can know that and they can track that and they can do it and he always wanted people to access stuff even though a lot of times he wanted it for himself he'd often say the poor people how the poor people gonna eat so he would always think of those things and then um yeah, then he took off and he went and did some other things after that. Usually it goes right into like tricking his brother um, after that one. But I just want to tell you guys, it was fun to read it. It was fun to sort of, rem I did a lot of work on those stories, trying to get them ready. And so uh, luckily there's lots of storytellers that I heard it from. Emma Marks, uh, Robert Zuboff, uh, Susie James, and, um, and, uh, was the last one, Frank Italio. So I wanted to just share them with you folks because it's it's fun to tell a story. Did you say gun when you were talking about the board? Were you calling it gun? 
Uh, no, ah, uh, gun was the, that's like a campfire, is gun. So, but usually gun means like firewood. I, my theory is like, it combines, or maybe there's a low tone version, which usually refers to the campfire, and then on is the flames of the fire. Because you'll, you'll see um, gun shitak, we saw that one for put it in the fire. And then we saw um, ganda is around the fire. Okay. All right. Any other thoughts, questions, things you're working on? Even if it's like from left field? What's that? Even uh, if it's from left field? Yeah, the season hey, uh, I, okay. Well, I was thinking about that the to, key on Kahuya, the. Uh, <clears throat> If we broke down Hashigenya, because I always thought of Hashigenya and Jesus as the key on Kawu. So that, that's what actually surprised me. When I was thinking about Hashigenya, I, I think of the older way I remember some of the old timers used to say, but I know some of them also said the key on Kawu. So what is it broken down as Hashigenya? I think it's, um, I, if I remember right, I think it was like going up against our our heads or something like that between our heads. Let me find, I think I've found it somewhere. I was told the same thing that it was um, the Kiankawa and Hashagenya were um, an an older, more you know how we have um, um, types of speech like more formal and less formal mm. and. Uh. And um, so the Kiankau and Hashigenya fall into that um, more older oratory style. And I mean, um, and then and Hashigenya being the other, you know, the Kiankau. Mm. Okay. Real interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. So that the, the old kind of pre contact way is. Um, uh, Hashagenya, and then uh, the ki and kawu is often uh, interpretation because then you have the yi and kawu, which would be uh, Satan. Um, yeah, I'm looking around. I thought I had that somewhere or saw it somewhere. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to take this that far off the track. I just thought it was curious because oh. that's the first time I've ever seen it used that way. So I will. I'll go see what I could find. I know I got it. I saw it somewhere. So, um, you, hey, Doug Juice, you have a, a question or a thought? Um, um, when you were telling that story and um, you were talking about Raven, um, it reminds me of my maternal line. Uh, which is uh, Yeltatsi, and that name is uh, Klinka in origin. And we've been given different uh, interpretations of that name, but the consensus is, and it's okay if you laugh, because uh, it's funny, um, the consensus is that the real meaning of the name is Raven's testicles. <laughs> um, I was wondering your thoughts on Yeltatsi. So yeah, Yeltatsi is um, it, so Dadzi is pyrite uh, or firestones, which um, and so that's usually like uh, how that name is interpreted as Yeh. Raven's pyrite or the these rocks that Raven would use to start a fire. But I know someone with the name Yesh Dadzi, and we were in Sitka with some elders, and I said, well, you know that Yesh Dadzi has like another translation, right? There could be another interpretation. And, uh, and he says, no, I didn't. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, okay, hold on. So I turned to this elder and I said, Das away, do Dadzi, do Dadzi, Das away. And he goes, 
his balls. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so it's it is uh, there. There are some body parts that have some of those. Kind of, it's more of a figurative term, and it's always interesting. Uh, I know a linguist who's who's always interested in that kind of stuff, like which kinds of things have direct terms and which kinds of things, because there are certain body parts that have like no there's like the name comes from something else that means something else uh even in english and so that's really interesting um because for a person you'd usually say dodzy and for an animal you should say kwati so it's it becomes an egg and so it's is there either an egg or fire stones and so uh yeah that that's what and so there the other thing that uh Yish told me is he said he said when something strange happened on the land they would put a raven they would make a name for some kind of raven based name yeshkachi ravens uh uh mat um that's a that's a name up by Haynes. um raven's poop uh, and then there's um, a whole bunch of Yesh Da'ahu is uh, in the Chilkut River, Raven's um, bundles, but it's usually interpreted as his bundles of dry fish, even though the word dry fish isn't in there. Sometimes those things are just sort of, they're just frozen in there somehow. But yeah, that's, uh, that's how I'd interpret that one. Okay, and then um, my... Um... Mother's uncle, who was um, Te Kwe Di, um, he had the name uh, Wolf Crap. And um, now I was explained, you know, sometimes we laugh at these names, but it was explained to me that they actually have a higher meaning. And um, and how would I say wolf crap in Tlingit? Well, there's three different ways to say the crap part. So it, de it depends, right? So I would say the English equivalent, and if, if any of you don't like uh, these types of words, but uh, you could say like, um, there, there's different ways you could say that stuff, right? You could say crap, you could say shit, you could say, um, uh, what else could you say? Like doo-doo or something like that, right? And, and so there's sometimes there's ways to say those things. So yeah, scat and chish. Um, so the, the most sort of indirect way is to say gande nagudi. And so gande nagudi literally means like going outside, right? So that's that's what the phrase means. And so this is this kind of most publicly acceptable way to say it. Um, although I think a long time ago, it, it wasn't, people didn't sweat that much. I, I think a lot of the, the bad word idea does come from uh, outside of Tlingit culture. Uh, the second way to say it would be um, the, the word, so Gandhi Nagudi is you could just say, whatever the thing. So you say, Kuch, Gandhi Nagudi. That would be one way to say it. Uh, and when you look at the stories though, like a lot of times there's these stories where there's a bear who poops in the trail and somebody steps in it and falls. A lot of the elders I worked with would translate that as Gandhi Nagudi because they're being very respectful to that bear. Because it's almost like that's another thing too. There, There is a bit of that though. Um, the second way is hot, which really technically means a mess. So qayes hotly, iron mess would be rust. Iq uh, hotly would be discolored. Um, that kind of when copper gets oxidized, sometimes it gets that bluish kind of tint to it. That's iq hotly. Um, and then there's Gundits uh, Aji Hotli is the name for uh, honey. And I didn't name it. I know people like to get technical and say, it's not the bee's crap, it's the bee's vomit. And I was like, well, okay, I'm not changing it. But it was fun if you don't speak English to your kids and you're like, 
putting some in your tea or something, and they're like, what's, what's that? Gunditsuchi hotly. Do I guess it go? No. Right? So, um, but so this one is a noun, so it does become possessed. So you could say kuch hotly. And my guess would be uh, if there was a name crafted for it, that it would probably be this one. This is kind of getting pretty matter of fact. Uh, Yesh Hatli is a place name up near Haines, up by Mud Bay. Uh, and that means Raven's Poop. And so the last way would be um, and that's pretty literal, right? Because there's, there's a verb root there. Um, there was uh, so a command form to uh, you wouldn't really say this to, but you might say it to a kid. Uh, the story that I was told, uh, George Davis would kind of laugh about this. He said someone lived across from him was an old Tlingit guy who, who didn't really speak very much English. And there's certain sounds that are in English that aren't in Tlingit. And so he, he had this great big dog that he named Dempsey. And for whatever reason, he named it Dempsey. And so he couldn't say that, so he called it Deusi. And he was a real old guy, so he wouldn't want to go for these great big long walks. And so he'd take his dog outside and get impatient and yell, um, A shit, Deusi! A shit! So he's commanding him to go poop, you know. So, uh, would be that one. Uh, but I wouldn't expect it to be that. And there, there are a bunch of names that are kind of, uh, is rock butt. That's a shukahadi name. There's, um, Gooch Hotly might be. There's all these, there's a bunch of names that are actually kind of insulting. And when people get them, sometimes they get pretty offended. Or some, some people think their name means like, I'm the mother of the mountain. But then you listen to it and you're like, oh, well, you're the mold on the back of a gumboot. Which I think in English, people get like, they get upset, like, ah. Or there's a name like Face of the Wave, which I think is a great name, but it's Teat. What? Which, if you put them together, it, it sounds bad in English. And so it, it's interesting how many of these concepts come and affect us in our names. And then what the end result is we end up with the same, everybody's got the same 10 names, right? It's, everybody wants these names of someone who was famous and Tlingit. But the other thing that does happen is sometimes there's a fight. You know, we fight sometimes. And in that fight, people will yell some kind of real nasty insult. And then they'll say, we're taking that and we're making it into a name. We're going to honor that. And so it becomes this big honor. And it's sort of a, uh, a stick it up yours kind of a thing that they say, oh, you, you thought you were insulting us? We love that. We love that name. We use that name. And so that's another like super <laughs> thing to do is just like take what someone says, be like, oh, no, no. And so it's, it's kind of fun because I was talking to Hawaiian folks about it and they'd say, they have a thing that's similar to that, but it's like um, they would uh, they just throw the thing right back at someone. So they'll say uh, like, well, I, I can't think of an example. You know, that's a um, you stink back. Like, you stink. You know, so that whatever you say, you just throw it right back at them. And you put extra emphasis on it and stuff. And so it's interesting, you know, because on the flip side, we, we're going to have to figure out some of that stuff because people do get in arguments and fights and you don't want to, if you're living in this Tlingit immersion, have the fight in Tlingit. <laughs> so, because that's the other thing too, is if you don't, then it becomes this like clan war level stuff where it could, couldn't you just have a disagreement? And so those are some things that I think languages need to work on is how to, even like the subtle things like I don't think it's that way. I think it's this way, you know, because if we don't know how to do that, then it becomes this huge crisis. And, you know, we thought the springtime, late spring was dramatic. Wait until you see the <laughs> big clan argument. So that's a good question. I, I know like um, my kids, when they were little, they would, they um, came up with words that they would use for their arguments that I guess we're like safe words, but they were, you know, like they would always call each other took plane or stuff, stuff like that, you know. Um, and uh, and I guess whoever could say it loudest was the winner or whatever. But um, but you know what about names? I know a lot of names. You know, we were told obviously that a lot of the names 
became shortened for, for longer meanings. And so it's hard to really figure out what those meanings are. And so sometimes people want to take their names literally and they just don't really like, and I'm not trying to, you know, say anything wrong here or anything, but, um, you know, like, like Shaukal Ish, for example, must the old gumboot or grandfather gumboot, you know, um, really, you know, Nora would say the, the literal meaning might be, you know, musty old gumboot, but it probably was a name of honor to somebody who had really good stick to itness, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so there was a shao tlach and then a shao tlach ish. And yeah, so yeah, I think names are really fun and, um, and it's really interesting too. And it's something that we should keep examining. Okay. Okay. Any other thoughts or questions? Okay. Let's take our break and then uh, come back at maybe 40 after, so 640. And then we'll run through a few lists of things and we'll get back into our story. Sheesh.
Okay. So we're going to smash through another list of things. So these are, um, they're all about direction and location. But then we saw some different things, right? Like ya, we, he, or ya, he, we, and you. Right here, here, there, way over there. But those are all related to like whoever's speaking, right? So it's just whoever's talking. They have a sense of space. Then there's between two objects, a da, a tai, a kina, right? So you can go around it, under it, over it, but it has to do with two things, right? So then there's this third category, which is universal points. So these are things that are just sort of, they're there. They don't need to have another word to belong to. I like to call them bases. That just means you can put a suffix on there. You can go de key day. Okay. Um, so some of these have parentheses because you're going to hear it sometimes as key and sometimes as de key. Uh, so when you say de key and kawu, that this word is in there, up high. So this means up above. And the word is de key. And then upstairs, dekina. Dekina. And then upwards, dekinde. 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 That one I most often hear as kinde. But you see this K sound having to do with the upward stuff. I'm going to see that later when K starts popping up and then Y starts popping up. So that K sound is upwards. The Y sound is downwards. So down below, D Y. D Y. Downstairs, D Y Na. D Y Na. Downwards, Yinde. 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 Kinde. Yinde. Kinde. Yinde. Kinde. Yinde. So going upstream or north, Naki. Naki. So that's where the name Nanya Ayi comes from. Downstream or south, Ichki. Ichki. And so these are primarily upstream and downstream. I think that's their original meanings. Uh, however, if you had these two islands, one was north and one was south, then they might be called Naki something and Ichki something. So you'll see that in place names. There's, I think there's a place called Naki Kit Aku, uh, the northern killer whale lagoon. And then just south of that, Ichki Kit Aku, the southern killer whale lagoon. Uh, ask questions if you got them. We're just going to go through. And then these lists are there. They're in Hausane Chayuk Atangi. Practice them, memorize them, use them, and then learn how to spot them. So going uh, up to the shore, from going up from the shore to the inland, uh, also could be going from the open into the shadows or into the woods, you have dark. 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 And this is the one they would use. They would say dark uagut. And that's it. sometimes let's say they passed away. They went into the they went up into the inland. Uh, to be in the interior especially this term is especially used for inland Shinget people. Dakka. 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 So there's a pattern that happens a lot, not every time, 
but a lot of times the vowel will go short and then if it becomes a compound except for the last vowel most vowels go short except for the last one and if they're high they'll often go low so if you have dak and ka it contracts uh, and their term for coastal Shinget people h ka H -ka. Now, to, if you're up in the inland and you're saying go down to the beach, for a lot of northern trinkets, you'd say ek. 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 And if you are a southern trinket or interior, uh, you might say ek. 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 So that's from the inland down to the beach. So you don't really say like niche day or niche dach. And you would, so in, instead of going niche dach, so if you're going to put some sort of direction in there, it, you should be saying ek or yan. Uh, but then these these are sort of like kind of interesting sort of things. And if you're going to say going from the beach, you just say dock or dock. Because then, and so it's conceptually, it's just a concept thing that sometimes is a little different. So this one, if you're going to go from the beach out to shore or out to sea, or if you're going to go from the shadows out into the open, like a deer that walks out into up into a clearing, that's dark. 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 And then to go way out to sea. Day key. Day, Day key. Day key. Day key. Day key. Day key. But then, so these ones, when we're talking about these, ik or ik, that's only the ocean. You can have a big old huge lake. Ah, plain. They seen ah. You can have giant lakes. That's got no niche. It's got no ik, no ik. You can't go dock, right? And so th these are just some different things. Like these ones really have to do with the ocean. If I want to say I walked down to the shore. Or do I still add day to a or do I just say a good? Oh, yeah, I would probably just say a good. That's a that's a good question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I think you can't you can a on there. We're down the beach. Okay. I don't seriously do it, but when my kids are being bad, I'll say, I'm going to throw you down the beach. <laughs> I don't do it. It's just a phrase, just a phrase. Don't call anybody. Internet police, don't come me. Don't come for me. Okay. <laughs> so if you're out on the ocean, you want to go to the shore. Yan. 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 This is probably the same conceptually that's used in front of verbs which means to completion so you say yan wene are you ready and that's sort of built in there uh oops i didn't have the chat open so out so across to the other side especially if a body of water or something diya yeah Diya. Uh, further over, the far side of something. Kaya. 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 Does that matter if it's on water or on land? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Diya is usually the other side of a body of water. Kaya might be like the far side of town. Like in a lot of those stories that say when Raymond goes looking for his nose or his eyes or something, that say, on day wukut ye kiya hit akawa ak. He went to town, he tried the house 
on the edge of town is usually how they translate that. Okay, so this one, there are two of these. So we'll look at this one first. Uh, Neich. This is the one you use when you say Neich. Come inside, right? So that Neich is inside of a building. But you use this one when you are inside of the building. So you should be you should be nace if you're going to say nace in this way. It gets a little confusing because there's also a noun, nace, which is home. So when you say nace de nagu, that's a different nace than nace gu. So they just happen to be two identical words. They're probably from the same term, right? Home and come inside of a inside of a house. Um, and so there's this is used as well. So when Raven goes inside that whale, he's like, oh, oh, maybe this is like a home, right? And so um, just another interesting concept. You also wouldn't say technically if you're outside of a house. You would say hit ye go. So it's another one of those things where it changes a little bit, depends on where you're at. Outside, gone. 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 So this one you can also have terms like gone, nach, like uh, uh, nach. we're translating this phrase. Shuck away. Oh, how did I say that? Just shuck away. Wait, gone, nach, ayayayayati, akidi. Um, only strawberries is the only fruit that has their seed on the outside. So nach could be on the outside. <laughs> yeah, where'd he go? Gone. Gone, they were good. Okay. So back or reversing. So then, and then there's some neat sort of things to these as well. Like if you were just to kind of stand there or sit there, and if you put your arms out, that's dock. And if you if you brought them back to your body, that's dock. Same thing. If you had your arm out, and you know, one time we went to immersion, and somebody had like a pet. Kutzin, this white rat that was like their pet, and it lived in their hoodie, it was like crawling around. And some of us were like, yikes. But you know, everybody's, everybody's got their own thing, right? But if you had your pet rat or whatever, the little da yeti that I found, if I raised it as a pet, and if it crawled on your arm going out this way, that would be dock. Ah. If it turned around and came towards your body, that would be dock. So that tells me in the Tlingit consciousness, it's like a person is standing on the edge of the ocean looking out to sea. Dock, dock, dock. Kind of, right? And then Kuch is behind your body. So that's why if you're singing Hokey Pokey, Dak yi tzu yi jin, Kuch yi tzu yi jin, Dak Kuch or Dak yi tzu yi jin. Uh, spin around. Um, and then what do I say? That's, let it be that way. And they go, Wee! Then you ask a kid to name a body part, and they always want to shake their tuk. That's just how they do. Uh, so that's kuch, right? And so that's to, to return. And so there's there's other things specifically for like turn around. It's a little bit different, but you'd say um, you'll see in those stories like that mosquito story. They never came back. They didn't come back. So similar, but you take the underlines off to run aground like your boat. If you run your boat aground, 
which I did, oops, you get kuch. 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 Maybe there's some relationship there between kuch and yana kuch. Maybe there's some relationship there with kuch and shawa kuch. So the water runs out of your head, right? Uh, there's a few others, and so I, I think these are ones to really focus on. There's some others that you they're a little bit more rare, like tlek de. I, I don't recall seeing that. You could say like leaning to sides and stuff. So it's getting a little bit complicated. But ones that you will see quite a bit is to the right, she nach. Nach. She nach. On the left, sat nach. And we'll put an inland version. If you're from Teslin, you would say So it's interesting because I could certainly see um, maybe there's a bay on there. Maybe there's a tree branch on there. Him. Uh, and the tzat part, I'm not too sure about. But then you could see like there's nach to go through or along. So there seems to be something there. So here's some bases. So this has this dash in front of it, which means there needs to be a noun in front of it. Ach da, around me. Du da, around them. Ha da, around us. A da around it. So the letter, the uh, it's, you're going to see that a lot with these ones. Um, so this is around or about or concerning. And we'll just put, uh, we'll just say it, but just remember, there's got to be a noun for these in front of it. Da. Da. Around the outside. So this is where the dakihiti comes from, the, the building around the outside of something. Daka. 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 The Daka. remains, the remains of something or the imprint, what's left after it leaves. Et. And uh, I I guess. Kashingitani has judged your spring sentences, and uh, the verdict mm. is more snows. Maybe, maybe it's just saying, hey, those were great. Make more spring sentences. <laughs> so, um, but I was thinking of E.T. because talk E.T., the remains of winter. Uh, let's say you had some kind of animal that likes to come around your house, like a deer or something, and it just comes and takes a nap somewhere, takes a nap somewhere else. Wherever it sleeps, that imprint that's left in the snow would be called ta -i -te, the remains of the sleep. If there's a footprint, khus -i -te. if there was a fire, gun -i -te. crumbs, atcha -i -te. There's another one. Ha e te ka hu. What do you guys think that one is? Oh, cool. I'll, maybe I'll put it. See you, Annika. Yeah, let me put it up here. Ha e te ka hu. What are the parts that you see there? Oh. On the remains of our, it looks like uh, uh, Kaku throws me off, man. First thing I thought was men, and I was like, the remains of our men, <laughs> but I know that ain't it. Yeah. Oh, so man. If, if there was one, sure. A, a person okay. or a man. So this is the, that's the plural suffix. This yeah. is a hidden rounded ending that pops up. So, 
would be people, specifically plural people. It could be men as well. That's one of those things like, I think it has a lot of non-gendered pronouns and, and like the way the language functions that you don't need to switch it too much for gender. But there are a couple areas that do. And one is ka, which there's two versions, just like in English, you say like, from the dawn of man. And they're not talking about like a dude, like a, a guy, a person, a male. And so this is another case where like, that's people. And there's, we just gotta learn, we'll learn how to spot it. You get a lot from context. But that's not ka iti. Ka iti would be, or ka ku iti would be the remains of people. It looks like our remains. Yes. Or the ones who come after? Yeah, well, that word is our descendants. descendants. And there are multiple ways to talk about that. You could say there, there's just some terms like when you pluralize grandchildren and grandparents, you're quite often talking about future generations and ancestors, right? There's there's just the way those things are talked about in Shinget is really interesting to me. But is our descendants. So this you're going to see it and it's it's an interesting it's for me it's a really interesting one right because you could take this what does what does that mean yati it is yeah to, to be right mm -hmm. being right be right and so if we have et and yati that that kind of doesn't make too much sense maybe you could say uh, if you put yeyati so then they 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 are where i was it doesn't mean you know and there's different ways that this is used as well uh like if we were like a say i had something come up and we're a totally thinking speaking community and I needed you, and I was asking if you could fill in for me at work. It's okay if you work in my place, or if I was standing in your place, whatever the thing is, you were the teacher, I was the substitute, I might say, I'm standing in the place of that just means he, he's he's usually here, but now I'm in that spot. So that's what that would mean. But then like, um, so some of these things that might, this one might not make sense. It's in the spot where the coffee used to be. Okay, that doesn't make sense. But there is this suffix, um, to go through or along something. And if we add that to et, we get etinach. I am through that place where coffee used to be, which is the, the sort of the literal translation, but what we're saying is I need coffee, right? Which usually by this point in the day, I don't, I've been drinking all day, but you know, um, just like conceptually like building on things building on things building on things how some of these ones work uh, i'll show you one more and then we'll we'll move along because richard downhower used to call these things the more than you needed to know category so then here's something um you could say uh, et and you could say Ya nach. I don't know if this is one word or two. I'll write it as two. More than last time. Itikin. Less than last time. It, it gets wild. And you can also say, <laughs> last, I said it was last. Itikak. The winter in the remains of it. That's how you'd say next winter. 
Wild stuff, wild stuff. Okay, chido itiku. So you guys got questions. How did you get there with next winter out of the remains of winter? I don't know how that one works. Because you have Kliyatak would be the other winter that already passed. It's on the other side. A itiku means the one in the remains of it, which probably has to do with this ha iti Like, so you have its remains winter. So I think it's sort of like, whenever this thing is done, it's the one that comes after. It's, it's uh, conceptually, it's just really interesting. It's like one of these things where like, yay, let's go down the whirlpool. It's like a lot of our oratory parables that you have to think about and ponder for forever. It's like a metaphor. Oh. And there's a metaphor, and then there's another. It's a box and a box and a box. Cool. Well, earlier I was kind of wondering about that when I was writing my or uh, working on the spring um, <laughs> sentences. When I said "gok iti nakatati," I didn't think that necessarily made sense completely. That I need to cry because of what you said the remain or like you know it, it's something that isn't there anymore right well you could say this is how i've heard these ones so you'd say a atina khatyati and then you oh, would, I see. would have a verb in a, what we call a subordinate form where, where you put in a little suffix a atina khatyati ukhsatini if you're composing your your sad like your uh, country songs or whatever like i need to see i need to see you i don't know that could be any kind of song but so then uh, i need it then you put the verb after it in this sort of um subordinate form and so it, it's really the other thing you could do is uh and this is this can get sad for a second but you could say, um, I heard Nora say at, shortly after Richard passed away. We really need them. So, you know, you could say, yeah. you could say, I need you, right? And so that, but there's different ways that that could be interpreted as well. So, yeah, it's like, the onion, like layers and layers, has to eat a kiti chasati. The name of this dance group, so ha itik. So you can also uh, put the suffix on there. So ha itik uh, would be in the remains. So that would you know just on and on, like all these different ways that this works. As they would say. Hastu. They usually when they're talking about their ancestors, they just say hastu. They, they they like it's like they respect them so much, they tend to not name them. And you'll see this all the time in Shinget when they start talking about the ancestors. So hastu um, eat. What am I doing? One letter off. Etik akedi. Right. So a seed in their remains. Oops, I spelled that wrong too. Okay, now I got notes all over the place, but I just I'm really fascinated with this et sit et where the glacier used to be, a um, whole bunch of stuff. You just see it all over the place once you start sort of. It's one of those words where once you see it, you start finding it all over the place, seeing how it works. How would that work with like thinking about language, you know, like I'm just trying to think of a set, you know, like a sentence with language and the remain, you know, the remains of the language, you know? Yeah. So like, but if we had we might assume then that it's gone. Like there's mm. just these little chunks that remain like, and that could be if we're talking about why people say Skagway or Yakutat or well, Yakutat probably comes from Yak anyways, but uh, cake and, and stuff like that. Like if that was all that was left, we could probably call that Hayukatangi Iti. So um, 
Yeah, but there there are other things with our language when they start talking about that too, like um, using it and um, holding on, having it in our hands. There, there's different concepts that we'll see um, more related to the G, hajiyeyeti and hatuyeyeti, those types of things. Okay. Okay. Uh, so another one is, so when we write it with a kind of a tilde after it, that means it, it just likes to have a suffix. It doesn't really like to be, you know, so usually you'll hear it as a gay day or a gate. On its own, uh, if you say ah uh, with the its, it usually is interpreted as doing it wrong, up to no good, shenanigans, breaking the law. It all depends on the context, right? So if they say, they're really getting into trouble. It could be harmless. It could be, you know, someone who's just running amok and doing their usual thing. But it could also be really a bad thing, too. It, just, it depends on you set up the scene. You set the context, right? Uh, but then if you said, like, uh, it, it could, in other cases, like, a gate with the good... Um, which literally means like I walked up against them, or you say do gate with the good, but what you're saying is like I ran in, I encountered them, like like if I saw someone that, like it was shortly after everything really went on lockdown, I saw some people I knew at Home Depot, and it probably been forty days since I'd like really talked to another human being other than my family, right? So I just I kind of forgot how to do that thing. So we're talking, I was like, I don't know what to do, so I'm going to go. <laughs> I just kind of left. But, you know, so, um, but it could also mean like leaning up against something. And, and so it could have these other meanings that aren't so, um, you know, to violate something, to do something wrong. Uh, uh, it is following it. So, uh, it, you know, has to it, you at you heard, um, she said that has to itchyan to atoei that we're following them. There's the ancestors, right? We're supposed to be walking in the path that they made for us. Gao itch, following the clock late. Um, kina is above something. Ach kina, ach kina yendekin yeich. A raven's flying over me. But that's where kinak adi comes from. So some of these things they'll they'll drop a little K on there if you put something after it. Uh, we'll do two more and then we'll we'll go back, we'll go to our story. We'll do a couple sentences from that. K is the base of something, like the bottom of a hill, the bottom of a mountain, the base of it where it starts to go up. It's also a tree trunk. It's the base of your spine. Um Isani is the name for little boys because uh, Nora said they're all spine. There's little tree trunks running around. Um, and then is the nose or a beak or a point of land. So that's, that's quite a few. Uh, and so w whenever we're looking at these, it's like here's a list of things. And some of them they're all over the place i'm going to talk to you about this thing i'm going to tell you about it. i'll tell you about this thing like so this one's used all the time i'm going to talk about it and what Shengit really likes to do a lot is name the thing then move it to ah uh. it'll be a da a dot a da day you know and so it, it does those things a lot uh uh, it might be following a person, maybe. Yeah, what well, sounds like it to me. Okay, so there's there's a few more of these as we go through. I think I got several more pages. We'll save some of them for Thursday because I think whenever we do these list things, it's like I think you start to get full, right? And and so, but part of your work is sort of looking at these, committing them to memory going back into the stories and speeches and finding out. So, Can I just ask one real quick question on, on kick? So do you, you obviously don't have to use that in conjunction with us. 
so, but how would you, I mean, I'm just trying to think of a word, a time when you use it. Yeah. Um, you would, if you're talking about like at the base Literally. of the tree, like, yeah. Uh, where, where's that ax? So oh, it's over at the base of that tree. Where ask a Okay. Okay. Zanti is the name of a hill. Ke is the base of that hill. Hini is a river at the base of that hill. Zanti Kehini. So it's built into that name as well. So it's one that's not used a whole lot, but more, I would say it's more commonly used, I would think, to talk about the, we'll meet at the base of the mountain, we'll meet at the base of that hill. So kind of at that point, right before it starts to elevate. So it's not like when you say, Ak Lake, Lake Lake, it's, it's mm -hmm. not like that. Yeah. It's, okay. It's like this other, it's like the base of the thing. Yeah, got it. But if you could say, yeah. and that would be like, you know, sometimes you get tightness right at the bottom of your spine. It just kind of start to get a little older. Sometimes it hurts a little bit more. Okay. So another question? Nope. Yeah, you know, you know how the sounds change when you have a, a, a letter or sound that sounds similar to the the suffix so if i was going to say dakshanak uh dakshanak e would it just be like that or would it be dakshanak e <laughs> i don't know <laughs> that's a good question because this so when we have this long dash that means it's usually a separate word but that's if you're saying like at the base of uh, that's the base of that mountain on the right side of Chilkoot Lake. If you're standing there looking at it, Chilkoot Lake is that mountain where the big thing fell off a long time ago and it's called So it's got that double K. So you might take a tiny breath in between them. So it's these aren't a suffix where they just really attach. But if it becomes a compound name, like part of it, like Dante Kahini, I would say write that as one word because it's been smushed together. You can hear it. So if, if it does get smushed together to become like, if we name that place, then usually um, it will start to affect those other sounds. But a lot of times, like if you have some at the base of Kaysan, right? Good question. Okay. So we'll just do uh, maybe one or two sentences from our story, just to keep moving through. Uh, here we are. I think this is where we left off. That unfinished canoe, the murdering canoe. Oh, yeah, we had the murdering canoe. Cool. I'm going to put your hand in. Okay, so who wants to read this sentence? And we'll move through it. Ishkut away, ye ash yawasaka. Akkaya kandat ak. Oh, no, Kanda Hicht. No, Hicht. Hawe. Wushtach da Saya or Saya Hua Hicht. We do cock. I just, I just keep listening to myself say frog at the end of that every time. <laughs> And that's what's keep on throwing me off. That kind of brain just kicked all the time. <laughs> <She's>... Kicked everywhere. <laughs> I'm like, please don't say frog when you're trying to say, oh, just hitch. <laughs> you could, you could hitch a hitch, but then it, bad things come your way. Don't throw frogs. <laughs> bad things gonna happen to you. Uh, <laughs> All right, so what do you folks, what'd you folks come up with for this? Uh, 
there there are some complicated things. I would say Sayahwahitch is literally like I I think of it like I I just threw it apart at the neck of it is what it sounds like to me. There's funky things in there, so sa is usually a voice, but it could also be I was supposed to look up decapitate. Was that like yesterday? I think it was yesterday. Okay, sorry. Um, but some, if you're going to have something to do with the base of a neck, that sa is going to be on there as well. So in, in this case, that's what I think. You, know, you say whoosh, dach, dach, sayach, wachich. I just ripped it apart right at its throat because it's this monster canoe thing. So we have very unusual situations. There's probably not another situation you would really use that. Uh, so it's a these, these stories are fun, but we also get these special kind of constructions. So we had um, um, as it kept biting down on me, it split apart. But I have a question on uh, that may scoot away. Um, you know, he said to him, Ye ash yawasaka, but nithgut away, I wasn't really sure. Okay. So like go, go into the house? Yeah, so here's here's the name, right? Like we just talked about with like coming inside. So then there's there's a couple different ways you'll see this done. So you might say, Nath wukuti awa when he came home but when you see it just like just with that verb it's doing a very similar thing but it's almost like he comes in says this thing so it's like it's a very interesting way to use these verbs mm -hmm. but i would say um when he comes inside he said to him right or when he came home. But for me, this neshkut, the way I hear it, it's like he came in, he came in to his uncle's house. But it could, in other instances, could be like went home, right? It's, it's so, it's interesting. It's very hard to tell which one it is. And it's also um, debatable on what the big difference would be. Like if you come home, you probably came inside, right? You don't go home to go sit outside. I don't know. Unless that's if that's what you do, that's what you do. Hey, but then achka ya kanditukich. So there, there, again, there's a couple of unusual things going on here. Let me turn my spelling thing off. That annoys me. So one is achka on me, right? So this is how you'd say on me. Achka siudaku satan. It rained on me. Achka dakwudzikit, it fell on me. Right, so that's what the achka is doing. My on. We just gotta keep remembering that that's the way that Tlingit logic works. Then we have yakandituk. It's biting on me. It's biting on me. It's almost like there's these two sides that are biting. There is a ch that jumps onto verbs. That means happens all the time. This is actually a little bit, it's a different one, and it's closer to the ach away. Because of that, because it was biting me, cha away. So cha away is a combination of cha and away. So cha is like saying, you see. So because it was biting on me, you see, I just ripped it apart. That's what he said. I ripped it apart. So we might put that. And wait to cock. His uncle? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then I saw in the chat, yeah, so goot is the root for walking. There are a couple of verb roots, or a few of them. The end just falls off in some of the command forms. 
So when you say command someone to go, you're usually going to say nagu or gu. Neshku, we de nagu, neshde nagu. The T just falls off of there. Same with the plural form. You would say, um, ha de nai ah, y'all come over here. We de nai ah, nesh nai ah, or nesh, yeah, neshde nai ah. Nesh ye ah, y'all come inside. Um, the other one that does that is sitting down. So you'd say, khwanuk, I sat down. But to tell someone to sit down, you say, khanu, and that K just falls off. It's an unusual thing that doesn't happen very often. But yeah, that's where you get, it comes from gut. So in all, all other forms, you'll, you'll say the T. Mm -hmm. Yuck. Hey, yeah, well. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll try this. I think we got time. Someone's got to read it. Hurry. Hurry, hurry. You do us. Nalgich ak. Sheesh. What did you guys get? After that, he told him that tree way over there, fall it. Wow. And we're crossing our fingers. Yes. So uh, you could also say, oh. well, it is. So Nashkaich means to fall a tree, right? So this is. Um, it is an important verb in Shingit because, uh, and and so, but it, it gets it gets awkward. How do we do that in English? How how do we English it? From off of there, right? That, those that's what the parts are. The ah part is get it off of there, and this comes from ah dach. So ah dach will very often contract to ah. So you're going to get any sort of verb and ah could come before or after. It's pretty common that it comes before. So ah nashqij would be cut that tree down and get it off of there. That's really what it's saying. But you, you'll hear ah with a bunch of different motion verbs. So I might say um, ah sa'in igucha, get your cup off the table. That maybe I'm gonna wipe it, and so again, like I don't have to say, table off, lift the container, right? I just say adach. There's Shingit uses that all the time, because it's like, of course, it is the table. Like if I said, if I'm wiping the table and your cup is there, and I said, and you went and got a different cup that was in some other place, I'd be like, what's wrong with you? You can see what's going on. And so Klingit does a lot of that stuff. It's like quickly communicates a lot of stuff using it. And you'll just see it all over the place. Um, and Nashqaich is, yeah. And, and those are ones where I'm like, it does mean to fall a tree, but I also, you could say chop it down. And so it's sort of like another thing where it's sort of like, we have decisions to make once we move it into English. But this does mean to fall a tree. It's a command form. So this also tells you that there's a na in that verb. Okay. Uh, we'll pick it up here on Thursday. We'll keep moving through the story. Bring questions if you got them. If y'all want to make a few more sentences, that'd be great. But we can also do that over the weekend. But if you didn't have any to share uh, tonight, then um, then you can go ahead and share. Make some for Thursday. Just that you're you're creating language. You're thinking, sharing your thoughts. And it's important for us to hear. Uh, graduation invites. I would say, shkun tu nach yawukudi. Then what we say? That's getting along.
I'll write it down in the chat. Let's change. Ah. Uh, Let's change. You okay? It's going to knock a yaw a And it's cheese. Ah. Okay. It's going to knock a yaw a that's what I would call it. So shkun is the school, tunach, going through it. Uh, but tunach ayawaguti is the construction. And so there's that gut to walk. Tunach ayawaguti means to, to make it through something, to, to accomplish it. It's usually, if you just said it on its own, atunach ayawagut, it sounds like they... Um, they made it through a tough time. But if you put some other noun in there, then it's sort of like, oh yeah, you accomplished that thing. You made it through it. Kuik is an invitation of people. And then kuk is the paper. Okay. Good Cheesh. Can I answer a question? Ah. Uh. Um. I forgot to write down the homework for the Elan training. <laughs> I know it's not uh, related to this, um, but if you guys remember by chance, Kuk or Kune? Uh, I finished that thing she had us do. I don't remember. I think it. Oh. Find, find a project to work on. What? Find a project. Uh huh. Something that you would like to start putting the files together for transcribing or translating. I got lots if you're looking for any. <laughs> um, okay. So just find a piece of audio that's not translated yet and that you would like to, you know, and you, the goal isn't like go translate this, but to use that to start setting up some of those files so you can work on it. Okay. Uh, Find the shorter manual and then tell how many pages are in the manual. Yeah, that's what it was. She yeah. just wanted to make sure. <laughs> so I just got to look at the last page. <laughs> how many pages? Okay. Um, <laughs> that's so good as cheap. What's Ben Ava doing? Oh, uh, Minecraft has cool Oh, she's playing Minecraft. She was, but I think she's done now. Okay. Can I join you guys? I got a whole bunch of dynamite in the chest. <laughs> Vanished. Vanished. <laughs> <laughs> hey uh when do you think uh might be a good time if, if you're still up for meeting up in regards to that thing i do with mariah on teenage yeah probably after this week i get like these crazy long meetings all morning but um okay next week will be whenever good. you feel whenever you feel up to a good time for you man because i know you're busy okay i'll send you a text Okay, that sounds good. And uh, I, I was considering doing all the Ronald Olson notebooks and transcribing with today's Slingit. Whoa, okay. That'd be great. That might be, that might be my deliverable, man. Okay. Yeah. Cheesh. All right, bro. Talk to you later. <laughs>